What's up everybody, ODC here, and I'm back with another video. Today's video I wanted to discuss uh, Shadows of the Empire and why I think it should still be relevant today and why I think um, Disney should actually bring uh, Shadows of the Empire um, out of the Legends category and put it back into the canon material. Um, so, I mean, I think this would scratch an itch for a lot of people. Um, obviously, uh, the story itself, I don't believe it really is going to hurt anything if it comes out of Legends and is, is instilled within uh, canon. Um, I don't really see a big problem with that. Uh, there's a couple different, like, garbage cartoon series that came out where Leia, I think, explained how she got the Bausch uh, um, costume, the bounty hunter costume that she disguised as in Episode 6. Uh, but that's all trash, and no one really watches that show anyway. So I, if they did change it, um, then it could work. Also, the Red Sun is canon material, so Prince uh, Shizor does exist within the canon. Um, also, you know, I think, you know, they need to start making exceptions for certain stories that were actually um, pretty well done, like this one, I think. You know, there's a little bit ridiculousness in it here and there, but um, other than that, I think it's a pretty well done story, and it's actually one story that George Lucas was actually looking into um, adapting on screen in the, uh, I think it was like the mid 80s, but he didn't, A, he didn't have the time and uh, what was it, Return of the Jedi just finished and uh, just wrapped up in 83 and was on screen still for quite a while, I want to say through to 84, um, you know, so that's kind of the issue, I think, with, with Shadows of the Empire got put on the back burner, but he did want to do um, this movie and, uh, or this story um, in on the big screen. So, um, I think it's, it, the only shot that it had was, as far as the big screen goes, um, probably around the 1990-91 era, because in 94-95, he started writing episode one. So, I don't think he would have had that much time, and then you know, from 83 on, it was kind of like he took a break, you know, and I don't blame him. I mean, he, the guy almost had a friggin' heart attack after episode four was wrapped up, um, due to a lot of the, the stress and issues that, uh, that movie, uh, had as far as like budgeting and time, uh, how time consuming it was and the deadlines that he had to meet. So, um, so, anyway, point I'm trying to make is that I think that it, it's due time now for a story like this to be brought to light and be made canon, and to also, you know, why not get it, not necessarily on the big, big screen, but we could, I think we could get at least an animated movie of this and make it canon, and if they make this movie within um, the same kind of animation that they use with the Clone Wars, I think people would love this um, with that same sort of style and direction. And if they just go page for page, I think, um, with this kind of similar what DC did with the Dark Knight Returns Part 1 and 2, I think fans would really appreciate that. And, you know, Disney's starting to kind of understand a little bit what people want with The Mandalorian. Granted, it's only three episodes in, and I want to say the third episode definitely my favorite so far. Um, I, I want to say that uh, they need to start doing more things that people enjoyed. And that's what I'm saying. You, if you're going to do that, then I think you need to dip back into some of the legend stuff and bring it back and just say, okay, I'm sorry, we messed up. We'll bring some of these stories back that were that that should have been that were canon, and now they should have always been canon. Because I mean, they're still within Star Wars. Even if they brought back everything that's Legends, correct? Which they can't, because Episode Seven through Nine really jacked things up um, as far as that's concerned. 
Um, this is why I still, to this day, think that we don't, we never needed a seven through nine episode. I feel like episode six was a definitive end and we didn't need anything else. It was just unnecessary. Um, but, um, personally, I, I think there, there's still a, a lot of room left, even if you bring some cannon. There's, a, I mean, there's a ton of room left. What am I talking about? There's a, a boatload of room left. There's the ocean amount of room left um, for people to make stories, and they don't necessarily have to go back personally and change all the, the legend stuff. It, it's just unnecessary. It's just a way for Disney to make money and change shit just to say that this is our version now. Where, personally, I still deem Legends as canon me personally, even if it's technically not. Um, I think it's the original canon, and that's what I go by. I don't go by this new silliness. So, um, there's a, I mean, there's a few here and there, but I don't want to get off topic here. I want to talk about Shadows of the Empire. Sorry. Um, so, rant over. Um, but Shadows, I, it's, it's one of those stories where I, you know, it had a lot of momentum back when this story came out. Um, it, it had a ton of momentum. It, it, it spawned a, um, a video game. There was actually two versions of that video game. There's a CD-ROM version, which is actually the better version. Um, it's much more crisp and clean, uh, the CD-ROM one. And uh, the cutscenes are so much better. For 1997, it's really not bad as far as like the cutscenes go. Sure, sure, some of the facial features are a little bit alien looking, but um, like Luke Skywalker's face after the swoops bike scene but um you know for the most part i think you know the cutscenes in that actually tell a much better story as opposed to just looking at it and reading it um you want to have that epic feel to it and that epic feel comes from voice actors and animation so um I think that worked. So if you're curious as to what I'm talking about, just look up the CD-ROM version of Shadows of the Empire. I believe people uploaded the entire movie and the game. The some uh, There's a couple of YouTubers that uploaded the entire game. So you can check that out also. It's pretty much the exact same game as the Nintendo 64 one, except the cutscenes are, are much better. So be sure to check that out if, if you're interested in that. The Nintendo 64 one, obviously we've got that version too. That's the one I played as a kid. And, um, you know, there's a, like I said, there was a lot of, of marketable things for this. And a lot of people enjoyed the story of Dash Rendar, even though it was very short and sweet. Um, it was to the point. And I think, you know, if this were ever to be made canon and, you know, if Disney, you know, got their head out of their ass, they could make, um, this into a fantastic on-screen big budget movie, but, I know they won't do that. And then they would also, the other issue would be they would have to recast Luke, Leia, um, not really Chewbacca, but Lando. Um, obviously they've done, they did, uh, recast Lando in Solo, um, which I didn't actually mind, um, Mr. Glover as Lando. Um, I think he did a decent job as that and I didn't have a problem with it. Um, but you would definitely have to recast some people, um, which probably wouldn't be the end of the world as long as they are that character. They have to become that character. They have to feel like that character. Um, and obviously there's Vader in here, the Emperor's in here, um, Boba Fett's in here, uh, Zuckus, Forlom's in here, um, C3, C-3PO, R2-D2's in here, um, uh, Bosk is in here. There's a whole bunch of, of Jabba the Hutt's in here. I mean, there's so many characters that we grew up liking. And I think this would be a really good opportunity to uh, maybe give this from the perspective. Now, the book isn't really 100% from the perspective of Dash Rendar. More so the video game is because you play as him. I think an amalgamation of both the book and the game would make sense with da the, uh, you seeing things through Dash Rendar's eyes because it would be extremely difficult to kind of, you know, recast and then have Luke, Leia, 
um, and Lando really be the focus, I feel like it would make so much more sense to get to know a character and have the character built if you kind of have this as Dash Rendar slash Boba Fett story. And everyone's been clamoring for a Boba Fett movie. Obviously, we have The Mandalorian now, which I think, personally, I mean, well, obviously, you know, I think, personally, I think The Mandalorian is a cooler character than Boba Fett based on just on screen, what we've seen on screen. In the comics, they flush a lot more of him out, but, um, I mean, I believe he, he, he takes down this one guy in this, it's like a, kind of like a bar, a bartender or like a bouncer at a club or something like that. I think he might, actually might be a, like a, a bounty hunter. I'm not sure. But anyway, he like, it's like this big beefy guy, meathead guy with like six arms and he breaks like what was it? He shot, he blows off one of his arms and then like breaks the other two or three. And he only got one arm left. He's like threatening people. He's like, he's like, I already did this, this, and this who wants to be next. And they all kind of back off. <laughs> um, because they're all chasing Boba Fett to get Han Solo and get that bounty, um, which makes a lot of sense. Um, and that's what I'm assuming the Mandalorian is going to follow suit with, uh, the whole baby, Yoda-ish thing. Um, who knows? It might be a clone of Baby Yoda, or it might be a clone of Yoda, or whatever. But, um, but yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff in here. Like, there's a lot of the the underworld gangster bounty hunter esque stuff uh, with, mixed in with uh, you know your Jedi stuff with Luke, and then your uh, Leia story with. Chewbacca, and then you've got the intertwining story between episode five and six, and you know you've got all these bounty hunters like I like I already mentioned like you've got Boss, you've got Forlom, you've got Boba Fett, you've got uh, I believe Zuckus is in here as well, um, and there's a lot of meat and potatoes in here as far as that uh, style of um, characters, so. It's a really good. I feel like this is this story was a really good um, f uh, flow and um, and uh, balance of everything that you like in Star Wars. So um, that's pretty cool. I really dig that a lot. I really like the um, the overall character designs. I like the fact that you really get to learn a lot about Prince Shizor, and that should be the other. It, sh it should really. This story should be about Shizor. Boba Fett and Dash Rendar. Those should be the three main characters. And obviously Shizor being the main villain, Boba Fett being kind of the anti-hero, and then you've got Dash Rendar as the hero. And I think it makes perfect sense. And then with the influx of those other characters, I think it could really hold its own. And I think it does hold its own, even if you just read the story or play the video game. Um, so you can go that route. And there's nothing to say that you can't add the scenes in with Luke because there's a lot of Luke scenes in here too. Um, but, you know, I think it would make sense. And, you know, for a, for a, a story that really did have uh, quite the marketable thing to it, like I said, it had your, your, your video games and it had toys. It had a sub toy line from the original Kenner's Power of the Force line. It had its own line. It gave its own spaceships. You got the uh, the Outrider, the out. Um, what was it? The Outrider or the Outrider? Outrider. Um, and um, you had that. You had uh, Chewbacca in his bounty hunter disguise with the really bad mullet haircut, and then you had <laughs> Princess Leia, obviously in her Bausch um, attire. You had um, Luke in his disguised um, guard attire. Um, you also had Prince Shizor, which was a new character. You had Dash Rendar, which was a new character. Um, you had a plethora. It was like a, a whole sub toy line. It was really nice. They had single carded uh, figures. They had a two pack, I believe, with Shizor and Vader. Um, they also had a two pack with IG-88 and Boba Fett. Um, so there was that, and they came with little mini comics too. Um, so there, I mean, there was a lot going on here. There was a swoop bike, uh, set, uh, with a, with a, the, the rider. I kind of wish that they would, uh, I, and I remember that being a kid after reading the book and I was like, I kind of wish they would have came out with some of the gang members that were on the swoop bike, but they didn't, um, which isn't the end of the world. 
But, uh, yeah, I mean, there was a lot of momentum that this story had, and I feel like a lot of people would enjoy this story in particular. There's a lot of other stories, and maybe I'll do videos of some of those other stories that I liked that I, I think could still be made canon and maybe made into an animated movie as well as this. Um, but, you know, maybe this is the one that could be on the cusp of being made on the big screen. Maybe it's one of the few. Um, same thing with The Old Republic or Knights of the Old Republic. Um, I think that, uh, especially seeing as with the timeline with The Old Republic, they could really dip into that if they do that properly. Um, I maybe want Dave Filoni and John Favreau to handle that, if, if anyone's going to handle that. Uh, those are probably the only two people I really trust with anything Star Wars right now. Um, but this story, I think it's a fantastic read. Um, go, go read it. Uh, like I said, there's a little bit of silliness in it, but for the most part, I, I really like it. Um, there's, like I said, there's a lot of cool characters in here. There's some new characters in here. There's actually one guy, I can't remember his name, that works for Vader trying to keep um, the gangs from killing Luke. Um, and he's actually pretty successful, him and, uh, I believe it's him and Dash Rendar. Uh, but they have different motives, obviously. Uh, but Dash actually helps save Luke like he does in the video game. So it all ties in. It, it works in very well. I think it's a pretty good, cohesive story. Um, and I think, like I said, if you take an amalgamation of both the video game and the book and you tie all the other characters in well, you could really make a great animated movie. Maybe make it about two hours long so you get all of that chunkage in. Um, hell, you could even make it an hour and a half each movie and split it up into two parts like The Dark Knight Returns did. I think that's a, it's a good thing to do. And also, you know, I mean, I'm sure a lot of... Uh, Black Series collectors would love all of the characters in here. They would love a Prince Shizor uh, character. They would love the, the version of Luke Skywalker, which is pretty much his Episode Six costume, just with a like a tan vest or an orangey, tannish vest, whatever you want to call it. But, you know, I'm sure people would love a Dash Rendar uh, figure and a Prince Shizor and, uh, I mean... You know, I, I think that would be pretty cool. Um, there's even some other characters in here that they could add in as well. Or they could just say, screw it, and just do a, a two-pack with uh, Prince Shizor and uh, Dash Rendar for, you know, for the toy line and call it a day with that. Um, so that would be pretty cool. But, I mean, also it would be pretty cool to get, uh, since we already have the Bausch Leia, we could do, uh, they could do the... Um, Bounty Hunter disguised Chewbacca with the mullet, <laughs> the bad haircut. <laughs> um, that would be pretty cool, too. Uh, so, I mean, like I said, I, personally, I think that this is a story that doesn't really need to be thrown to the wayside. Um, I think it should be brought back and uh, be used as canon material. Um, but if you haven't read it, I, I definitely suggest going to read it. I know it's an older story, um, but... Uh, I think it's worthwhile, and I think it's well written, and I think it's well illustrated, and uh, yeah, I don't think, really think I have anything else to say. This is kind of just a, a topic uh, to bring up, a conversational starter, and uh, yeah, I would just I, would, I just want to see what you guys think. What? Let me know specifically what you guys think in the comments below. Um, and I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you guys listened to me drone on for however long I'm droning on for. But, uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thank you for listening, as always, and I'll see you guys on the flip side.